Are you swinging your diesel? It's flying. Welcome to Hoobie's Farm, the dumbest farm in all of YouTube. And finally, I'm going to give you an update on what's going on at Hoobie's Farm. And it's been a while because there hasn't been a lot of progress when it comes to construction of buildings and homes and other things. It's a very slow, long process where months can go by before anything happens. But a big thing did finally happen here on the farm and my giant building was delivered. They brought it in on a giant semi from out of state, 60 by 100. 106,000 square foot building and the structure of it showed up on a truck, one truck, and was unloaded by the person who will eventually assemble the building with a lull. But there's still some pieces that are not here yet. There's also some stuff going on around the farm that I can show you, but also we're going to have to the car wizards. We haven't seen him in quite a while because the Dodge Viper is finished. And he actually saved me a boatload of money thanks to you all in the comments section. So thanks again so much for watching my videos and engaging in comments. And when we're doing something wrong, you correct me and save me a lot of money sometimes if you're an expert. So thank you so much. So uh, let's get started with what's been delivered in the back. So a lot of things had to happen before the building was delivered. First, the site had to be prepped and flattened out for the giant building pad. Also, a permit had to be placed, and actually they didn't like the building this far over, so I had to move it over to where it was even with the old barn that was built in the 1940s. So once it was moved over, they could finally pour concrete. We have a 6,000 square foot concrete pad here six inches deep so I can put as many lifts in as I want not to worry about them ripping out of the ground and then finally the building was delivered it was about a well three or four month wait to get the building delivered but it still doesn't have everything this is just the structure or the rib cage of the building here you can see these are the roof pieces that will span the entire 60 feet in width and as you can see they are very thick steel beams that are designed to take a lot of load and well, a lot of wind, which in Kansas, where you have tornadoes, you definitely want that. So that's all stacked there like, uh, well, like Legos or like Lincoln Logs, sort of, along with these beams over here. And over here is where they started unloading things, but then they thought better of stacking them all up in the dirt. There's still a buried BMW over there, but we have some more parts of the structure, along with some wrapped up items. And then you can see there is the roof here. They did provide a lot of that. I imagine that's what a lot of this wrapped up stuff is to be protected. There is the uh, center part where the V meets on the roof. And I imagine more parts of the roof as well. But what is missing is the insulation and the outer skin, the outer siding of the building. Sort of like this barn over here, which was built in the late 1960s, but it's been completely reskinned with modern looking metal siding and another layer of roof over the original tin roof to make it nice and modern looking. So that's all showing up in a different truck and that's gonna be another week or two apparently. And then when the building starts going up, it'll be pretty quick, I hope. But the erection doesn't take very long. It's all the after process finishing up that will take a while because it'll be built, but it'll have no electrical. It'll have no inner rooms or any of that kind of stuff. So finishing it out will be a whole nother process. What'll make it easier is the house addition will be going on at the same time. So while the new master bedroom gets all of its finishes, I can do some over in the new Hoobies Garage 3.0 as well. Finally, another concrete pad was poured here in the back for the great room. This house built in 1895 didn't have a big room for entertaining with any kind of high ceilings. So that that solves the issue and then allows me to load into the main bedroom right there. The windmill unfortunately is very very broken. They came out once to try and fix it in the middle of a crazy rainstorm. We got three inches of rain in a span of 24 hours so we're waiting to reschedule on that and the pond is still an absolute mess. Barry the dirt guy who made all of these berms out here and I've been talking about it and he thinks the best solution since I went out in the middle in the waders with the Jeep and realized well it was only about this deep up to well, not even my waist, uh, that the pond sort of needs to be drained and properly dug out. Otherwise, it will always be swampy. You sort of need to dig out and start over, get everything really nice and deep, and then you can stock it with fish. And then it becomes more of a sustainable ecosystem rather than a swamp like it is now with all the cattails and such. Uh, but
But one nice addition to the berm though is trees. The junipers will grow to sort of become like the cedars going along here and give a lot more privacy along the road and then some decorative trees on those berm to where hopefully in a few years everybody will forget that this old farmhouse is back here and we have a bit more of a secluded oasis full of hoopties. And finally, the other big addition has been here at the front, which is now my only entrance. We have a full solar powered gate installed and Barry has moved some dirt and some rocks to make it look like a nice grand entrance with a few more trees which are coming. This will be really nice and feel a little bit more secure since we are right off the road. So there is plenty of progress here on the farm. I'm really hoping by year's end, I do have a usable building that I can park cars in. It'll be so nice to have all the hoopties home to where I can just walk out the back door a few feet into the big garage, pick a car and go. But for now, the hangar being less than 10 minutes away isn't that bad. But there is one car that needs to get its way back to the hangar because it's finished. And I'm very excited about this. My 2004 Dodge Viper, which I bought a total absolute mess, but the car wizard has solved all that for me and saved me some money. So let's head up to the car wizards. All right. Well, the Viper's coming down, it seems, but, uh, wizard. Are you swinging your diesel? It's flying. Uh, you're just about to put it in, it looks like, huh? Yeah, I got my new oil pan, modified oil pan in, and I'm going to start bolting in motor mounts. Really? See how low it is, and just, it's like half as deep now. Well, you're still absolutely crazy for doing this, but yeah. uh, <laughs> you've done much worse, I suppose. Mm -hmm. How are things going? Pretty good. I had my building delivered this morning in pieces that came off a truck, so as you know, it's 60 by 100, which is... Well, width-wise, what's your building? This is 80 by 150, and it's 100 wide back here. Okay, so you still have a much, much bigger building, <laughs> but the length, I guess, from here to here will be about the same, 100 and then 60 that way. I'm just trying to envision it now. I can't wait to see it. It's going to be cool. Yeah, so you've been working hard on the Viper, huh? Yeah, it's actually done. Cool. Well, it's also Ferrari World in here. Daniel's son must be very happy with a 360 and the California. Yes. Is it doing the bad top things like all Californias? Well, you know, this is my first California top. You know, I've never had to deal with uh, broken tops in California because they were all new. He's being sarcastic. Mm -hmm. so, but You can see all the bro broken plastic pieces and then this is the upgraded kit. Ah, okay. It fixes that problem. Well, because I've heard like horror stories on the Californias, the tops being 30, 40 grand to fix. Is they that are. the case? Yes. Jeez. And then the transmission is the same on my SLS. It can be another big failure point on them, uh, sort of like the Ferrari 458s and everything else. So, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but I know how to fix them. Okay, well, they're cheap for a reason. But they are very cool cars, though. Mm -hmm. And it has a back seat, which I like. So, yeah. Uh, speaking of Ferraris, any word from my 456? The poor guy sitting without a motor back there? Yeah, the heads are actually, they're looking to repair them and see if we can save them and they're doing some machining down there. Our machinist is, I think he was at the limit on what he can do on a set of heads like that. So we sent him to Florida. Okay, yeah, we had him skimmed, which they were already skimmed once. So we're at like maximum for what you can do as far as like a warped head. And then something else and the valves failed as well? The guides yes, and things. The, uh, the, the valve seats, I think it was, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, it is what it is. So, uh, but good news is much easier to work on Dodge Vipers, huh? Yes, much easier. I don't know about cheaper, but... Well, you did actually save us a bunch of money. I should say the internet comments saved us a lot of money because we were kind of frustrated because there wasn't any new availability for struts from Dodge, from Mopar. Right. And there's actually a really good reason for that. It's the aftermarket sort of took over, did such a good job that they really don't need to supply uh, struts or shocks or coilovers for Vipers anymore. So you took the advice of the comments in my video on the Viper and found some aftermarkets, right? Yes, I was doing some searching actually for good use ones. I actually came across BC coilovers. And at that time we actually saw in the comments, people were also recommending that as well. Okay. I was like, hey, let's just do that. All right, so these are the old ones. You can see the oily, they're just blown out. It's just completely smoked. So yep. the new ones are on. Yeah, I'll raise it up. You can take a peek at them. Cool.
Yeah, it drove like absolute doo-doo before. Felt like it was really loose and worn out just just from that. Oh, that looks really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. This little cap is adjustable. This is also adjustable. We've got it at about a stock ride height. All right. Grimes actually did all the work. Did a really good job. Yeah, looking good. So the other part of this was the exhaust just sounding absolutely atrocious. And you had some experience with your Viper. And you knew exactly what to do, right? Right, because it's twin five cylinders, the resonance is, when you have side pipes, five cylinders, and you get all this resonance going, it can literally be mind numbing. And the fix for those is just some high flow mini cats, hmm. catalytic converters. They're actually right around in here. Yeah, you can't see it because the covers are back on. Yeah. So but there's some tunage going on because here's the headers coming off. Yep. And then going in to there. Yep. But, uh, I cut out a section about this big. It was just pipe and welded these in. It sounds really good now. And then here's the rears. Everything turned out very nice. Lovely. Almost. I still need to do tires. Yeah. Since this thing was modified, it uh, doesn't really want to uh, keep traction either. So some fresh rubber will help with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you did say that there was no misfire and no misfire codes, but the lumpy idle, you did find something? Yeah, we did find, I think it was cylinder number five. The spark plug wire was broken. So we repaired it, and it runs much better, but it still runs like it has a cam in it. So now it'll be faster, and it was already very fast. It's fast, yes. Well, let's hear it. Before we couldn't do it, you even had a conversation yeah. at all. sure if I'm gonna have a good video reference from before and after but like I can actually have a normal conversation speak at a normal volume in here even with the engine going that's that is so good thank goodness all right well I appreciate it I'll be on my way I suppose huh no 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 there's a bill and it's a pretty hefty one too he's not losing his touch <laughs> yeah you were looking for exotic pets before Okay, you did fluids. Mm -hmm. How did the brake fluid look? Was it old? It was uh, probably 50% used up. It was a dark brown, but it wasn't bad, bad. Yeah, okay, spark plug wire, catalytic converter, coilovers, $1,845. So that was about $1,000 cheaper than used ones. Mm -hmm. So that was a savings there, $600 for the install. Page two, <sighs> shop supplies, $35. <laughs> <laughs> Page I'm always three. scared when there's a second page, but yes. uh, thanks for that. Uh, grand total, $4,074. Well, that's less than your initial estimate. It is. It is less. Even though it's a lot of money, it's still less. That's always nice. Refreshing to show up and have to pay less than what was estimated. So mm -hmm. thank you very much, Mr. Wizard. I'll pay up and we can take the Viper for another spin. Oh. I can hear my own thoughts again. This is an unbelievable difference in noise. But when you get on it, <laughs> it does make the good noise and immediately lose traction. That's one thing I still need to do is get some tires for this thing. But also, it's just going to be an issue with this car because it has the cam on it and the tune, obviously, way more than its 500 horsepower stock, which is another reason why it's so squirrely. But this is exactly what I remember about my last Dodge Viper that I had from this era. It's still so comfortable and nice, way easy to take on a cross-country tour, unlike the first generation, uh, but it's still a wild and crazy Viper. Let's go ahead and go through the gears again, down in a second. Go! Oh, absolute perfection. And looking out in front of this crazy bodywork with those big fender flares, it does feel like you're driving the Batmobile a little bit, especially in black. And the suspension, before it felt all loose and weird and wandering, and now it's nice and tight again, and it wasn't obscenely expensive to fix. So the Viper is exactly what I thought it was, a great entry-level supercar, reasonable to keep running, gorgeous, 
and comfortable and super fun and engaging to drive. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully Hoobie's Garage gets erected here very soon. And if you want to watch some more content uh, on my other channel, Good Morning YouTube, I got to drive on the F1 course in Las Vegas just a few days before the race actually started in a rental Ford Mustang, which was quite a hoot. So check that out. Thanks so much again for watching.